Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makoto Man at YouTube with another model video looking at the maintenance of the Spark Maker SLA resin reactive 3D printer. We've covered the screen, we've covered the bed leveling. Now it's time for the actual resin tank swap and when's a good time to swap it out and alternatives to changing the film. The video will be in two parts, one buying a whole new tank and the other one changing it to a different film, both bought off eBay. This is the original film, it has been dented, scratched, all sorts of things stuck into it and where there's all sorts of cuts and curves, resin has been curing and being stuck in it, making prints more likely to stick to the screen rather than the bed. Eventually, a hole has been torn out and spills resin straight on the screen, thus keeping the print purely in the tank and not on the bed. This is a fairly easy but expensive fix. I bought another bed. I thought it would be handy to have one to swap, one to have on the side. And the film is nice and clean with two extra screws. On white, comparing the two, the damages is far more obvious. Put a very light amount of grease on the frame to have a watertight seal on the printer. Before we use it, we're going to do a test by pouring some water in it and seeing if there are any leaks, as well as cleaning out any contaminates. I don't see any drips. Probably should leave it like this for approximately 10 minutes but this does definitely look like a good seal and a good tank. The new tank has been installed. We'll add some resin and do a test print. The best thing about having some bad resin that doesn't stick too well to the build plate, we'll be able to see if this print can survive the whole process. We'll give it to 15 hours it needs, being a BT tank. With bad resin, but a good tank that gives absolutely no resistance, the print was quite a success. The new clean bed, we have not had a pancaked or failed print yet. Some pretty large ones. They've had some minor flaws due to the current resin being used, which will be swapped out. Uh, for now, we're going to refurbish this screen. I bought the cheapest sheet of FEP film. It's also used for older Polaroid style or film camera work. This is the size we got so we can definitely fit multiple screens. Instructions how to sort it out. It's only about 2.2 mil thick and 140 by 200 mil. An actual print bed this big would be very nice. Just some um, fancy plastic film. Armed with the correct size Allen key, the back of the screen has all of these bolts to be removed. Moving it, we've got a washer, a lip, and a frame, as well as the old screen, which is formed to shape. The big screen will actually consume the whole thing and will not work out in being able to be cut in two. We're just going to place it on top and screw it down. We stabbed each hole with a knife so the screw will be able to go through. The screws alternate from long to short and I've only tightened the ends to build tension once the screen was stretched over the lip. So we've only got four screws. We're going to slide in the long ones and mount them on top of there for screwing and place all the ones in. When you're doing something that's watertight or under pressure such as this, it's important to go from angle to angle to angle to angle and you keep going in an almost starfish pattern of tightening to even out the whole load when the screen is stretched. When I started screwing in some of the corners, there was a lot of wrinkles. Do not rem worry, as as you continue, it will flatten out as so. Completely tight and fastened. <coughs> Sounds like a drum. To test for leaks, or we'll fill it up with some metho. 
and have a look if there's any drips. If not, we'll put it straight into the printer. Loading up some resin and we'll do another large print with the new screen. In about 10 prints, the tank is starting to wear but nowhere near the damaging points of when we had to replace it. And here is all the finished prints. You can see that they're flat, nice and conformed at the base level. They're not flipping or doing anything funny. It's not hard, expensive at all to do it yourself by buying the perf sheet. Definitely worthwhile buying a second tank to have something spare with many sheets on hand. This concludes the tank maintenance on the Spark Maker 3D printer. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. And make sure you change those films before they deteriorate too much as it will result in failed prints and a waste. As a bonus, let's do an experiment. I've seen UV reactive or light curing putty, but I've got a lot of access to UV reactive resin. What if I wipe on a little bit onto the seam and chuck it in an UV light and sand it back? Will it remove the seam line as well as etch the two parts together? We'll just use it straight out of the printer because why not? And with a fine Q-tip, just dab it straight onto the seam and let it flow in. It's only heaped on at about half a mil or less and we'll flip it around. I think three to five minutes should do it and see if it slides off or if it actually sticks to the plastic. Here are the pieces and we can see the raised area that is the resin. Let's see how easily this resin is removed. Wet sanding, of course, as to not bring up any resin dust. It's uh, pretty, pretty tough. We are using 200 grit sandpaper, and this is a vintage model, so there is not a lot of uh, raised detail, and it seems to be wearing down pretty well. I'm feeling it with my finger, and as it uh, gets finer, we'll work our way down the sanding um, grades. I think I have definitely mounted way too much for the first time. This is kind of cool. The resin does seem to be completely invisible. I'm feeling it by the finger and fingernail, it feels smooth. Some follow-up putty with Mr. Dissolved Putty may or will be required. We'll chuck some Tamiya primer on top and see where we stand on the matter. Here it all is with some interesting results. The basic Two half piece has been covered absolutely sensationally. No complaints there, works well on that front. For a complex two part vintage part, some areas the resin has flaked off and would need redoing. Other areas not too bad or it's sunk a bit. Definitely needs a second run but most of the other putties would work like that. This is the bad resin, a thicker, higher quality one will do a better job, but not too bad for a vintage kit. And here's the second piece, also needs a little bit of following up, but almost absolutely flawless. I think if I do it a few times, I'll get the hang of doing it better and better. And that is the conclusion of the experiment, as well as looking at resin tanks for the spark maker 3d printer thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content and we'll catch you guys later make sure to have a look at the description section below social media all those bits and pieces for extra content and have a good one happy modeling